Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we'll have a quick roundup of what we've actually managed to conclude in the January transfer window. There wasn't any major change to the first team at all, nobody left, nobody really came in. But we have brought in a number of youngsters who will either go out and loan or sit now under 23s. And we also have games against top of the table Liverpool, yeah the top of the table now, and Arsenal who currently sit in fourth. So nobody really left the club during the January transfer window except for loan players. So we'll completely ignore that and we'll just focus on the incomings. First of which was Alan Virginius from uh, Sochaux in France. He is a winger, so it's highly unlikely he's ever going to get any game time for me. But we signed him for £2.6 million, as that was his asking price after being transfer listed by request. As you can see, he's left on loan to join Malmo in Sweden. He's a two and a half star current four and a half star player who's already valued at eight point two five million after we've signed him. So we will be able to make some good money on Virginia. So I'm just hoping that he improves enough at Malmo to get into a top league at a better club, and that will increase his reputation and then his value. Next to come in was Angel Villa for four point three million pounds. He is in a striker who's went out on loan to Seattle. Um, he's valued at six million pounds already. Two star current, five star, well four and a half star potential. Um, a decent striker who could end up seeing himself in the first team, but he would need to see some rapid improvement for that. He's already at 19. Um, and by this point, I would be looking to draft players into the first team, and he's not quite there yet. So we'll see how he progresses over the seasons. Next to come in was Lucas Nunes, again from Racing Club in Argentina. £4.2 million. Classed as a wonder kid. Um, his asking price, well, I think his minimum fee release clause was £4.2 million, And he is someone who could potentially see first team football. Maybe next season. He's an attacking midfielder. He could come in as backup to Jean-Pierre. Two and a half star current, five star potential. Hopefully see some good things come from his loan spell at Argentinos Juniors. Where we'll be getting first team football at the very least. Next to come in was a Milton Yeber, who have signed from a Colombian club, I believe. An 18 year old central midfielder for £1.2 million. He's out on loan now to RC Lens. Um, so as the uh, in League 2 or League 1? League 1. So he's getting first team football at League 1, which will be nice to see. Hopefully he can get plenty of that and come back a much better player. Next to join was Michael Anderson from Esbjerg, £4.3 million. Another central midfielder, Danish this time, and very well rounded. Um, he's similar sort of mould to a lot of our central midfielders, where he's more of a playmaker than, say, a workhorse in there. But um, he's went. He's still at the club, actually. He hasn't went out on loan. He's with the under-23s. Couldn't find any club who was willing to take him on. But we'll give him half a season in the under-23s and then probably loan, loan game time next season. Next to come in was Olve Fleslin from Mole for 975k. A decent centre-back. I'm not really sure if he values at least two-star current ability. I don't think he's that good. He's probably more of a one-star player currently. But he does have the five-star potential. So we'll see how he progresses whilst he's out one loan at Wuhan, who I believe is a Chinese Super League club, which is a little bit different. Never really loaned anyone to the Super League. And finally, we signed Chris Lund from Esbjerg for £7.5 million. Now he is probably the best of the bunch. He's still in the under-23s, as there was no offers in for loan. But physically, he looks great. Technicals are there while we need them. Same with his mentals. Two and a half star current, five star potential. He's the one I'm most excited about, and he's the one who I could see getting to the first team pretty soon and hopefully making a difference. There's obviously been a quite a lot of games during the January transfer period, so we'll quickly run through those. The first of which was the FA Cup third round just before the January period, which we won 3-1 against Arsenal. Alexander, like I said, had put them in front two minutes in, but Dodo, Haaland and Jean-Pierre got the goals for us. Next up was a 4-0 home win against Brighton. Jean-Pierre with one, Esposito with two and Erling Haaland with one. We then went away from home against Leicester City and managed to scrape through with a 1-0 win. Bella Kocha for getting the only goal in the 20th minute. Next up was a disappointing defeat this time in the League Cup quarter-finals against Everton. We did go in front through a Haaland um, penalty in the 10th minute, but Moise Keane and Vlag, Vlad Dragomir gave Everton the two goals to see them through to the semis. Onjin getting sent off in the 93rd minute, but that bad little resemblance to the actual game. Next up was an away tie against Aston Villa in the Premier League, which we won 3-1. Jean-Pierre, Luca Pellegrini and Mariba with the goals. Trezeguet getting a consolation for them in the 80th minute. 
We then had a fantastic win away from home against Chelsea. We were 2 0 down after Jin Sancho and Frank Kessie had got goals in the first 25 minutes. But Dodo, Marcus Antonio, and Bella Kotchap in the 94th minute gave us the three points. We got through the FA Cup fourth round against Huddersfield away from home. Um, Mariba, Pellegrini, and Gables with the goals for us, and Benza with a goal for Huddersfield. But we're through to the fifth round, which is what the board expected us to do. So we've met that expectation, which is nice. We then played Norwich at home in the Premier League and won this one 3 0. Haaland with two goals and Jamal Lewis with an own goal. And finally, just before we will play, Liverpool was a 1 0 away defeat to Wolverhampton Wanderers. They've now took four points off us this season, so they've definitely been our bogey side. And we just played awful in this game. We didn't create anything. And although we were missing some faces due to injury on the bench and stuff, it wasn't good enough. We really should have been winning that game. But after all those fixtures, we did get a good number of wins in there. Man City have dropped a little bit. We now sit in second position, level on points with Liverpool sitting top. And that's how we're going to play today in our first game. And I believe we are at home. So we've got the advantage there. But Liverpool are a really good side. As you can see, they've won the, they've won the title the past two seasons. So we're going to be... Pretty struggling in this game, I think. Um, I think they've definitely got a better side in terms of individual personnel and they're having a better season. Purely down to them sitting top and us sitting in second. But this is the lineup that I've decided to go with for today's game. Reykjavic will start in goal as Jack Butland has still picked up a knock. Bella Kotchap on Jaden Kerr as our centre-backs. Dodo and Lucas Pellegrini. Uh, Luca Pellegrini in the wing-back roles. Mariba and Danny Olmo in the centre with Jean-Pierre. In behind Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito. We've seen this Liverpool side plenty of times. Doesn't look like there's any major changes from the past couple of seasons. So we'll just get a kick off. First highlight of the game, 12 minutes in, is Jean Pierre with a. Oh, well, what happened there? I have no idea. Jean Pierre with a free kick. It's headed to Esposito, I think. And a quick uh, strike goes just wide, and we don't go 1 in the lob. We have dominated the first 15 minutes looking at the match stats, and we have our second highlight. Is that. I thought it was a free kick. It's not being given. Uh, Liverpool now in possession. The ball's played over the top for Mo Salah on that right hand side. What a challenge that was by Luca Pellegrini to block the strike there. And that was the end of the highlight. Another highlight now. Danny Olmo giving the ball away to Skriniar in the centre of the park. And now Liverpool can maintain possession and look to progress forward. They're keeping possession within the defensive line. And actually they've given it away to Mariba in the centre. It falls to Pellegrini on this left hand side. He gets past his man. The ball's played in the back post. On the edge to Mariba. He gets the start ahead of Renato Sanchez today because he has been playing well. Dodo's in the box. He's going to go for goal. Alisson with a good save. Olmo with the corner now. Plays it into the back post. It's clear by Skriniar. And is that the end of highlight or is it going to continue with Esposito? Uh, that's it. Another highlight now. Mo Salah with a free kick for Liverpool. He's played at the back post to Martinez. And it goes over the bar. Mo Salah again with the corner from a similar position to the free kick. We managed to get... Oh my god, what a strike that was. Jorginho Wijnaldum putting Liverpool 1-0 up half an hour in. It comes from another set piece. We managed to get it clear, but then it falls just ideally to Wijnaldum on the edge of the box. And it's a first-time volley. It's absolutely no save enough for Reykjavik. And we go 1-0 down despite dominating the early game. Another highlight now. It's Mo Salah with a free kick from a similar position. And it's played in Skriniar. Oh, Joe Gomez. Fifth goal of the season. Oh, we're falling apart a little bit here. 42 minutes in. And Liverpool put themselves 2-0 up. Set pieces seem to be a little bit of our kryptonite. And the ball finds its way to Joe Gomez at the back post. And a decent header. 2-0 um, Liverpool. We got it to go in half-time 2-0 down. Hopefully we can get something here. Dodo's in the box. However, ref, give that a penalty. He's brought him, He hasn't brought him down, but he wobbled them so it is apparently Erling Haaland's going to step up for Sheffield United come on son he's put it in the back of the net we're back in this game 44 minutes in 2-1 let's just get to half time G the boys up and hopefully they give us a better attack and display during the second half and there we have a Sheffield United 1 Liverpool 2 I do feel like we're a little bit a, a being sh I, I don't even know how, what to say set pieces again Mo Salah <sighs> Mo Salah with a free kick, uh, corner. Skriniar rises highest to get his sixth goal of the season. And Liverpool really are set-piece specialists. They are every every goal's come from a set-piece. And they're really making the most of it. 3-1. Uh, 
Only 20 minutes to go. We'll get our second highlight of the second half. It's Liverpool on the attack again with Eric Dyer. Ball's played in, finds his way to Manny in the box. Very fortuitously, but thankfully we managed to get rid. They've had a much better second half than we've had. We haven't really performed at all. Ender Stevens coming on for Luca Pellegrini. We will get Marcus Antonio on for Danny Olmo in the centre of the park. But I think it's going to be a little bit for naught. We're not in this game anymore. Lotero Martinez coming down the left-hand side. Back to Eric Dyer. Can we get the challenge in before the ball is played in? It's all the way back to Fabinho. We are pressing quite highly, so it's forcing them all the way back to Allison. But they work it back forward again and Chiesa cuts inside from the left, finds Martinez in the box. What a fantastic save that was by Reykjavik. It was given offside anyway, like, but... 12 minutes to go, Marcus Antonio tries to find Dodo on the right-hand side but gives the ball away. Thankfully, Bella Kochap plays it over the top of the Esposito. He's up by the byline, finds Dodo who goes for goal. Stinging strike, but a good save by Allison. Only eight minutes to go in this match. We will look to make our final change of the game. We're going to get Erling Haaland off for Gables who can go and play in that advanced forward role alongside Esposito. But only four minutes to go now. We need a goal now if we're to stand any chance. Palacios dispossesses Marcos Antonio but will win the ball back with Dodo on this right-hand side. Finds Esposito back to Antonio. And Antonio's fourth goal of the season makes it 3-2 and potentially a chance at us getting another goal and getting a point in this game. It was a decent bit of play by Dodo on this right-hand side, carrying the ball forward and playing it back to Esposito. And Antonio with a sting and strike from the edge of the area, making it at least a little bit more convincing of a chance. But the time is just ticking away and I don't think there's going to be any further opportunities for us to get back into this game. And now we have it. Sheffield United 2, Liverpool 3. We are really choking against the teams that we need to be not choking against. Man City last episode, Liverpool this one. We've got Arsenal away from home, fourth in the league, which is going to be another tough try. Um, we've actually fell down a fourth ourselves. We're still eight points clear from Chelsea in fifth, which is fine. But we're now three points behind Liverpool, top of the table. So we're here for the second game of today's episode against Arsenal away from home. A little bit deflated, I'll not lie, but we'll crack on anyway. And this will be the lineup for today's game. Reykjavik and goal, Batella, Onjin and Kera in the defence. Dodo and Luca Pellegrini as our typical wing-backs. Marcus Antonio returns to the starting eleven with Danny Olmo in the centre and Jean-Pierre in behind Erling Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito. A pretty well-changed Arsenal side from what starts the game. Still got some usuals there like Gwen Doozy, Joe Willock, Emile smith rowe Reese Nelson, Burn Leno. But they've got like Anthony Martial up top, Correa, uh, Koundé, I'm not even sure who that is. One of the nice things is they're not playing Saliba. He must be injured, which is great because he's literally one of the best centre-backs on the game. But um, let's get to the game time, see how we face up. First highlight the game, two minutes in, we are in possession with Kera on the right-hand side in an advanced position, but we go all the way back to Batella, who gives the ball away and two of my centre-backs are out of position and Nelson now can play through Anthony Martial pretty easily, but Reykjavik retains his spot ahead of Jack Butland after a good game against Liverpool. Um, keeps us nil-nil. Another highlight now, Luca Pellegrini finds Danny Olmo, Mar Marcus Antonio, Jean-Pierre, Come on, boys. Playing it about nicely in the midfield, but there's not really much movement in the final third. It falls to Esposito, gets past his man, goes for goal. Burnt Leno gets a hand to it, but he cannot keep that out. 16th goal of the season for Sebastiano Esposito. And a nice way to put us 1-0 up six minutes in. Some decent play to retain possession. Luca Pellegrini finding Esposito, but really was a crafted goal by Esposito. Getting just the yard on his man and being able to get that first time strike off and put us 1-0 up. Another highlight now, Batella finding Danny Olmo in the centre of the park. Alex Tellez manages to get his head on it, but we retain... We don't retain possession. Jean-Pierre gives it away. And now Arsenal can potentially build something with Hector Bellerin on this right-hand side. Switching to Alex Tellez on the left. Gets past his man. Dodo, though, does excellent work to get back and dispossesses him. And he can go on his own run down his right-hand side. Chased by Nelson, who gets the challenge in. Somebody, somebody make an effort out of this. Here, here it is, Joe Willock. Coming down the left-hand side for Arsenal. Plays it back to Reese Nelson. Oh, what a ball that was. And what a goal. But is it offside? Please, referee. It is offside. And there we are. Don't even need to take any notice of that. Correa with a free kick from deep for Arsenal. Finds uh, Gwen Doozy at the back post. And I don't think that one's going to be offside. 
Arsenal won, Sheffield United won 12th goal of the season for Gwen Doozy, which is pretty good. And um, Arsenal level. Another highlight now, Kerr on this right-hand side finds Dodo. Uh, similar situation to what happened during the very first highlight. Hopefully we don't lose the ball this time. Kerr tries to play it in, it's cleared, but we retain possession with Luca Pellegrini, Jean-Pierre and Danny Olmo playing a nice little triangle. And Arsenal can't get near us right now. Jean-Pierre goes for goal. And that's the sort of thing he can do from about 25 yards. And he beats Bernard Leno at his far post, getting his 11th goal of the season. We've seen this numerous times now with Jean-Pierre. He really does have a good strike on him from distance. And as you can see, a nice little pivot turn. Falls back to him fortuitously, comes back off Willock. But um, a good strike to put us 2 on up. Another highlight now, Nelson with the ball in. Oh, right, Gavik. I've just kept you in, mate. I've just kept you in because you had a good game. And this is how Europe appears. Anthony Martial's fourth goal of the season. We'll have another look at this during the replay. Tellers finding Nelson. Good cross in. Reykjavik commits. And poor. Martial with a goal. 2-2. Two, two. The lead lasted all of a minute. If that. And that's going to be that for the first half. Arsenal probably should have the bet having the better of the game during the first half, should I say. Not necessarily should be in front because they were definitely bouncing back after our goals that were scored. But um, we'll see how the second half goes with the first highlight of the game with us giving the ball away from a throw-in, which is just lovely. But Jean-Pierre wins it back. Right, if it gives the ball away to Hector Bellerin, though, now Arsenal can come forward down this right-hand side. Korea switches it. Batella with a nice little cut-in. And Esposito is in behind. He goes for goal. Good save by Bernd Leno. Haaland keeps it in. I don't know why that was going on for a corner, mate, but Korea with a free kick. Plays it in. Back post. Set piece. No, it's not goal this time. Haaland... Wins the header and it gets clear. 67 minutes in now. Luca Pellegrini on the ball. We're a little bit deep in our own half. But thankfully we've kept it safe enough that we haven't lost the ball. Until then as Willock drives it forward. He's beat all our defence. He's in behind. Oh, Reykjavik. What is that? Why? Oh, I should have played Butland. Why have I done this to myself? Pellegrini with an awful pass to Marcus Antonio. That's cut out by Willock. And he just completely destroys me defence. Not, not even any challenge in that. That is dreadful. Right, give it, that's pretty much your career at uh, Sheffield United, I think. 18 minutes to go. We need to get back into this game. Otherwise, it's going to be back-to-back -back defeats. Luca Pellegrini pinching the ball after a pass by Arsenal. And Erling Haaland, who's had a... Oh, I mean, what is that? That's not even a chip. Didn't even get off the ground. And we just wasted a perfectly good opportunity. If I was that kind of man, I would substitute right a bit now. He's having the worst game out of anybody. But I don't see the point. We'll get Mariba on for Marcus Antonio in the centre of midfield. And we'll get Erling Haaland off for uh, Goebbels up top. And see if he can make any difference. Arsenal have played it about well here. But Batella gets a very, very nice tackle in. And we managed to win possession back. Which Reykjavik again comfortably gives away back to Arsenal. As White comes down this right-hand side. Does two of our men. Plays a battle of Willock. Anthony Martial with his header can I get it on target this time it seems to be all Arsenal at the moment they've definitely come into their own after getting that third goal Korea down the left hand side finds Willock on the edge I thought he was going to go for goal there but he goes back to White who again does Luca Pellegrini on the right hand side and thankfully goes to goal after goes for goal after getting to the byline final sub of the game is going to have to be Luca Pellegrini off for Ender Stevens as he's really struggling out there must have picked up a knock and with five minutes to go doesn't look like it's happening, boys. We'll go very attacking for the final few minutes. But the highlight has come for an Arsenal free kick. And De Vry goes very, very close. But Kerr manages to get an interception in before he manages to get it on goal. And Rafa with another corner with two minutes to go in this match. Please, lads, get an equaliser. Time is just ticking away. And that is going to be that. Arsenal 3, Sheffield United 2. That's not good enough from us. We really should have been doing better in that match. That's three defeats in the past four Premier League games now, which um, after the start of the season is pretty, pretty disappointing. We're only five points clear from Chelsea in fifth now, who, uh, if you've noticed, we've got next in the Premier League, which isn't ideal. But um, we really do have a difficult run of it. But thankfully, that means we've got a, an easier run towards the back end of the season. So we'll see how that all shakes out anyway. Looking forward to the next episode. It will, of course, be the Europa League second knockout round. We don't quite know who we're facing yet, but um, you'll find out next episode. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. 
but until next time take it easy